I decided to build an SSTO space plane in the new 1.0 version of uh, Kerbal Space Program and here is the result. You can see those holes uh, in the center section next to the wings. Actually there were wing sections there but uh, they always overheated so I just removed them. It needs four uh, engines to uh, go up uh, or at least three, but I could uh, manage only with four because of symmetry reasons. The base was the same thing as uh, the last uh, space plane I showed. Uh, basically, the Duna uh, space plane or uh, its predecessor, the Moon space plane. But the rules have changed, so it has less intakes and more engines. Actually, one and a half times more mass. So first uh, let's start uh, with real time and uh, uh, debugging enabled. Uh, from the debug menu, the physics tab and their, uh, the arrow and uh, thermal tabs can uh, enable you these displays, what you will see. One is that uh, uh, the airplane is reddish color. This is because uh, its temperature is currently around 300, 300 Kelvin. We can see the uh, canards they are uh, lifting its nose up. So these are the vectors uh, of the thrust. Uh, and actually uh, we can see the drag uh, as red spikes too. The yellows are from control surfaces, the blues are from fixed wing surfaces. So I go up uh, with less than full thrust just to spare fuel. This is fine uh, until I reach around 10 kilometers there. I go transonic and around 12, 13 kilometers at least with this plane. And we can go full throttle with a uh, nose barely up uh, attitude. And this will guarantee that uh, uh, the engines will just uh, start burning furiously and they will provide a, an amazing thrust which was not really possible uh, in the previous version however they will do this until 25 kilometers and nothing i did uh, could uh, fix this so here, here are the drag vectors so the thing is uh, the intakes do not matter anymore so uh, it is has only uh, four intakes and uh, of course the pre-coolers also has, have intakes but uh, that's all. Here I start my uh, uh, run, so it's maximum throttle. The point is, we have to uh, do as much uh, delta v as possible under 25 kilometers. But uh, with the new uh, deadly reentry and uh, aerodynamic heating thing, uh, the aircraft will get really hot. So we have to uh, do this uh, acceleration uh, just under 2000. Uh, uh, degrees Kelvins so we have to do the most possible delta V uh, and that means we have to get very close to the limit where the parts uh, really explode and actually this is why I have that uh, docking port on the top instead of using the mark II uh, inline docking port because the thing is if I put that in, uh, in the beginning after the cockpit uh, the whole thing overheated and exploded. Why? Because the nose is a very hot point and the fuel tanks in the center uh, absorb all that heat and uh, make it cooler uh, and themselves getting warmer. The thing is, if I put there that uh, docking uh, port, uh, the heat cannot flow through uh, towards uh, uh, the tanks. So instead uh, I put this uh, really stupid looking docking port on top I actually like that other design better, it looked better. So here at this point uh, we are losing thrust uh, with the jet engines but we got the most uh, what we could from them so I switched rockets, turned off uh, the intakes so that I have less drag but at this point there is not much drag anyway. As you can see that, uh, we also lost most of the lift. I used uh, less than full throttle this time because I wanted to burn uh, in the higher atmosphere more but whatever I do uh, however I do uh, I always get uh, up uh, 
with the same uh, delta v remaining so the thing is that uh, there's not much uh, more I could do could do with this with current limitations so this is the burn and we will soon finish this and uh, switch to time accelerated mode so I had to finish the uh, circularization with the remaining uh, oxidizer of these uh, 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 what are these uh, rapier engines? I always want to say say saber because it's the real counterpart. Anyway, uh, it cannot completely finish this, it, so I have to use the uh, nuclear uh, to raise my uh, periapsis uh, that I have a circular orbit. And once I have a circular orbit, I have enough delta v uh, to do a, a free return trajectory, trajectory like uh, uh, orbit around the moon. But uh, it's not enough for more, so uh, this cannot land there. Maybe, maybe on Mimas, or yeah, but it wouldn't be able to get back. The thing is, nuclear engines get really hot in this uh, release, and uh, the same way as with the nose, uh, we have to use the tanks to to get that heat out of them. Here I am uh, moving the fuel back and forth uh, to show that uh, if there is fuel in the tank, it gets. Uh, 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 faster but it takes away the heat from uh, um, the engine so the goal is to keep this uh, under 2000 degrees and it gets really close actually with this long burn in a previous uh, version of this plane there was a, a circular battery uh, just before uh, the engine and then I couldn't get the heat out of it so it's, it's really important uh, just like with the docking port to have uh, a heat sink that uh, at least buffers the heat. Now we can see that it uh, is getting colder as I go farther from Kerbin. So this visu visual visualization is getting a cherry, pinkish cherry red. And here we go ar around the moon. There's not much to do actually, I just have to wait until uh, we leave the sphere of influence. In one previous try, I could get even as low as 150 kelvins, but not this time, so it was pretty warm. I just raised back uh, uh, the uh, what is periapsis so that I uh, won't get burnt uh, in the atmosphere. And here is the arrow breaking, which actually was longer than I uh, expected, so I was too ca cautious uh, with this one. Uh, anyway, the goal was to slowly dissipate the speed. You can see that uh, the aircraft is again getting hot uh, from this visualization. Uh, it's, it's visible also the temperature values from the menu. This, this is this can be turned on from the debug menu also, not only the visualization but the menu. The same for the uh, aerodynamics displays, but I didn't turn uh, that on for the menu. So several passes, and uh, finally, yeah, one thing, uh, if I am before uh, the uh, periapsis and I have a nose up attitude, that will raise the periapsis because of the lift, what you can see here on the wings, And but if I am after the periapsis, then the nose down attitude will uh, raise the uh, periapsis, uh, I don't know why this is so probably it's logical, it's somewhat strange, counterintuitive. One would expect uh, that nose up attitude would, would raise it, but no. So my thing was to control uh, the altitude of uh, this uh, uh, periapsis, uh, that it was, uh, it would stay on uh, 40 kilometers and thus letting me slowly dissipate the speed. And finally, I circularize back to uh, my usual 72 kilometers orbit so that I can uh, start my descent uh, finally towards the space center. And strangely enough, this method still somewhat works, uh, although with space planes one has to be careful. In this case, there is a thing what uh, they introduced the air brakes, which uh, are really powerful. I would say they are too powerful. 
So it happens that uh, they wait barely anything and they can stop me uh, in the air. So even if I would normally overshoot uh, uh, and I wouldn't be able to do anything else, uh, these air brakes uh, would uh, cut my speed in no time. And actually this helps uh, to avoid overheating during re-entry. So although this craft doesn't have heat shields and doesn't have any protection, uh, okay, it, uh, it's resistant until uh, 2000 degrees. But uh, but uh, the the thing is that uh, these air brakes will save me during re-entry. It is possible to uh, enter uh, without air brakes with similar trajectories I did with capsules, and uh, they work just fine without heat shields. And I think this is uh, uh, not really realistic. So I open the air brakes, and you can see the drag vectors on them. They are intentionally on the top so that they can be used on uh, ground, and. And the other thing, this uh, guarantees a, a nose up attitude, which also helps uh, to slow down the craft while still in the upper atmosphere because it glides farther that way. But at this point, my problem was that I was going to overshoot, so I had to move the nose down, it was somewhat hard. Uh, and one thing, it also has a parachute on it, uh, so and now they work on the ground too, so it can be used uh, to slow down the aircraft too. Uh, because of an emergency. So here is my final approach and uh, we are uh, going to switch back to real time soon. I just want an uh, additional thing about the docking port. Why I couldn't move the docking port for, uh, further back? Because that would move the uh, fuel tank too much forward and that would move the uh, center of mass uh, too much uh, that I couldn't compensate with the uh, these uh, canards, which are actually tailfins, uh, at least classified as so. And uh, yes, that's, that's a, um, a recording design problem in, in with space planes in Kerba space program that the center of mass has to be correct uh, um, with regards to the center of uh, lift. And this design is always stable. The center of mass moves a little bit, somewhat, but even in the worst case, it is slightly stable so it is always flyable if not uh, you can use the air brakes or the parachute to uh, help it uh, uh, orient itself so i was uh, uh, lucky enough that i didn't need to use the remaining fuel in the engines i could have used uh, but i didn't need to and i was coming in very steep until the last moment so that i uh, can preserve my speed because the yes, uh, speed generate uh, lift. And everything went uh, finally perfectly. Uh, the thing is, we got again this uh, wind collision bug where it hits the uh, launch pad. And this is really annoying. Yeah, here it is. But otherwise, it was, uh, it was completely uh, fine for the first try. Okay, I practiced a lot before this video. And it turned out it uh, it is not as easy as it looks now. So here, here is the bug launch pad. Thanks for watching. Bye.